So this is what we're going to go over then. So we're going to start off on the deadlift. Uh, me and Carl are going to go over that. And then once we've gone over the five points, we're just going to let you run free. And we'll just come around, give some tips, pointers, and make sure you're doing everything how we want it. Right, first off, let's just go through basic setup before we go through the five points. First just in one, case. Six point. Always chalk up. Six point, always chalk up. If you never use chalk, there's your added bonus straight away. Right, so first of all, we're just going to go through normal deadlift. So Carl's just going to walk up to the bar. He's just going to go feet shoulder width apart. So from there, all he's going to do is hip hinge down to the bar and slightly squat down as well. So the grip is just on the outside of your legs, okay? So then from there, he's just going to squeeze that bar as tight as he can and basically stand up as fast as he can. And then from there, you're just going to hip pinch. Once it's past your knee, squat down, return it to the floor, okay? Always return it to the floor. It's called a deadlift for a reason. It's because there's no, no momentum. You don't want to be bouncing it up and down all the time, okay? So let's just start off with the first point then. So a lot of people, you'll see them, when they grab the bar, they kind of just shrug it up. Rather than like that. Perfect example. Okay? So once you put a bit of weight on that bar, if you're shrugging it up like that, sooner or later you're going to get some form of injury. Okay? So what we like to do is called taking the slack out of the bar. So if you listen carefully, when Carl pulls it in a minute, so he's basically pulling it off the floor, uh, pulling it without pulling it off the floor. So all that's doing is priming all your muscles in your back, getting your uh, grip ready to go. Okay? And then from there, it's just going to help him explosively stand up. A lot smoother. Okay? Got it? That's point number one. Okay? Point number two is lats. Okay? So a massive muscle running down the side of your back. Crucial in the deadlift, okay? So if you're not pulling that bar in tight using your lats, you're missing out on a big muscle that could help you lift more weight, okay? So all you've got to think is when you're in this bottom position down here, is that you're squeezing down here as tight as you can, okay? There's certain exercises you could do, say before you did a deadlift, for example. You all right? I just got just a bit flustered with you touching me. Right. Don't do it in front of them. <laughs> so there's certain ones you can do. So you just like, you can, all you can do is pull a band. So for example, all you do, you just wrap it round. So this is just getting your lats primed and ready to go. So all you can do is just wrap it round. You can just do as simple as simple as sitting on the floor and basically pulling the band in and squeezing down the side there, okay? You can basically do that in between sets if you're someone who struggles with getting your lats involved, okay? So, point three is basically moving the bar as fast as you can, getting aggressive. You're all nice people, sometimes you're too nice. You gotta find an angry side, so say one day you come in and you hate what the music is, use that to take it out on the bar, okay? Think of something that's pissed you off that day. So some people, they'll just go through the motions, so they just go really, really slow. So a lot of people do get tight, and it looks good from here, but then it goes... <clears throat> then they finish off with this. Oh, I've gone fast now from like the knees up. So it's just... Oh, this all of a sudden... Well, it should be. So, so what we want to do is basically rip it off the floor. Still keeping all the technique in place, but moving it as fast as you can. So as you move up the weights, you're not going to be able to move it this fast when it's a weight that's heavy for you, but as long as you've got that intention of moving it as fast as you can, it's going to help you when you get to the heavier stuff, okay? So then, number four is bracing, okay? So a lot of people struggle with bracing. We've tried to get people doing breathing before, but it's something that you've just got to keep working on all the time. So some people, they'll brace, so by bracing, I mean filling your stomach with as much air as possible at the top, okay? Some people do it when they're stood up. Some people, I personally do it when I'm down there. Okay, it's just personal preference on that, of what you do. So, Carl, what do you prefer to do? Do you prefer to do it stood up when you're down there at the bottom? So when he's down there now, all he's trying to do is fill his belly with as much air as possible. Okay? Number one, it's helping protect his spine when he's pulling the bar up. Number two, again, it's creating that full body tension. Okay? So every time he puts that bar down, he's just thinking about resetting his stomach. Okay? Every time you put it down. If you're doing it on the first rep and then two, three, four, five, six, you're not bracing, you're missing out on getting more of that tension inside your body. Okay? Then what leads us on nicely to the fifth one is just full body tension. Okay? So what, what you're going to find on all these three lifts is that they're all about tension. The more tension you can create in your body, the more power you're going to be able to put on that bar. Okay? So when he's down here, he's screwing his feet into the floor, he's squeezing the bar as tight as he can, and he's bringing it up as fast as he can. 
Okay? Every single time. I know he's making it look a bit heavy now, but it's because it's a heavy weight for Carl. He's not really gone heavier than that for a long time. No, I'm not. Okay? It's true, I'm not going to lie. First rep was hard, <laughs> so I'm sweating. So simply, what I was going to do now is everyone's just going to get in maybe small groups. I'm not sure what the number is we've got. And we're just going to hit five reps and then go back. Me, Sean and Carl are just going to walk around, and just go over these tips, okay? I've got some sheets printed off. Say you've forgot anything that I've just said, you can just have a look now, okay? So everyone just get on the bar, maybe three, four to a bar. Let's just start hitting some deadlifts, okay? Just sets of five, make sure everyone gets a go. What's up there? Na, 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 na. Nice. Nice. Up. There you go. It's better. Hips down a little bit. Tight. All right. Up. Oh, nice. There we go. There you go. See, see that there now? A lot better. So you're filling your belly up first. So the idea is when you're taking that deep breath and you fill your belly up, that's what you're doing at the bottom of the lift. You're filling your belly up. Try it again. There you go. That's better. Good. Much better. So pull your shoulders back and get nice and tight here. Right, rip it up. That's better. So bench press. A very, um, it's an exercise which is obviously butchered a lot. You see in gyms, you see all sorts of movements going on. Hey? Sure, just in case it's on camera and it falls. <laughs> so elbows out, elbows in. So the first thing with a deadlift, sorry with the deadlift, I don't know what I'm saying. The first thing with a bench, Oh yeah, the plates always go this way around in like in this gym. Anyone know why? I'm sure, I've told you. I'm sure I've told you a few guys. No, no one actually know the real reason. It's an old school myth. <coughs> H, you must know this hardcore lifter. No. So the power of the of the the strength of the plates is on the inside here. Is is obviously with the right end. So this is going into the bar. So that's going in. That's going in. Who's in the middle of the bar? Carl. Oh. So the power goes to Carl. Okay? So when we put weights on, on the bars, make sure they're turned inwards. If you if you want a bit extra weight. Um, okay, so first thing is how to set up for the bench. Let's have a look at Carl's setup. Everyone's gonna have a different setup. Yeah. Setting up should take longer than the actual set. When you're in position, you shouldn't really be comfy. If you're comfy, then you're probably not tight enough. You can take a couple of reps, then we'll, then we'll just break it down. <coughs> okay, so let's just start off. Okay, let's have a look at the setup position. So lie down. So some guys will like to put their feet on the bench, some will just kind of shuffle it in, like, into position. The main thing is, is getting your weight on your upper traps. So all the weight has got to be on your upper traps. So however you get that feeling, then that will be fine. So Carl, for example, he just kind of shuffles back, don't you? Yeah. So like the old school way, I used to do, like, the old seat, like, feet on the bench, work drop, make it all the So you're creating an arch. Yeah. And that's the key to do, so people are getting So then he's got all his weight on here. So naturally, he'll have a curve. That's not bad for your back because you've got because the loading's going this way, not that way. And plus he's going to be bracing here, so he's going to be kind of, you know, be holding that spine intact. So abs are going to be tight, glutes are going to be tight. Now his heels are off the floor and that's totally fine. So don't think that your heels need to be on the floor. All he's going to do is push his heels down when he's doing his set. If they touch the floor, fine. If they don't, you know, you know, don't worry. Like if that works for you, good. If not, then just find a position where your feet can get some leg drive out of, okay? So tension will be is, all the way on his upper traps, shoulder blades pinned in tight, abs tight, glutes tight, driving the heels down. So just do that again. So a little test, I'll say a little test, you'll come up and when he starts lifting, you give him a few little yeah, whacks. When I'm hitting this guy, just look at this one of it, it's not too So abs, solid. Well, solid <laughs> Legs shouldn't move that much. And I'll say, See if I'm touching around here, then he's got his tension through his lats as well. Okay? So those kind of three things, you know, I would say to, to, to start on. Um, make sure that you're driving through your feet as well. I think, did you put that in here, isn't it? 
Yeah. Okay, so upper back tightness. How do we get upper, kind of, what is upper back tightness? Um, the easiest thing to, you know, to like explain this would be just a band pull apart. You know when you do like a band pull apart, everyone hold their arms out, arms out straight. Pull, imagine pulling a band apart, have a slight elbow band. You know, then what do you feel in your upper back? What does it feel? The answer is tight, isn't it? Tight, that's tightness. That's, that's your back tightness. So, the hard thing is, is obviously when you're benching is to try and keep that tightness. The easiest thing obviously to think of is have your chest up. So, you pull the band apart, push your chest up, keep those shoulder blades pinned in tight. So obviously when you're doing your reps, always just think, shoulder blades back, shoulder blades back. Okay? Um, I guess there's no real cue to, you know, to try and encourage this. It's just being aware of that back tightness, back tightness. I mean, Jake, have you got any cues for that one? Back tightness. Yeah. Band pull apart is perfect one. Yeah. So like if you're, if you're struggling to obviously get that tightness in between reps, bang a few kind of pull aparts. And not ones where you just bring them out. Hold, <coughs> squeeze, back. Hold, squeeze, back. So what muscle, okay, so racket there, so like hold on to the bar, what muscle is he using to try and feel for yourself, what muscle is he using to get the bar off the rack? What main muscle is he using? Think about what we've just done with the deadlift. No. No. Lats. So we're starting to realise that lats play a big part in this, don't they? Because think, like, if he's tight there, and all he's doing is just pulling it down, that's the same motion as that, isn't it? So all it is is, you know, that's your lats coming. These, some have like, uh, like obviously those clips are a bit big, so, you know, so they're high, you know, on the edge of there, where, whereas these aren't too bad, so it's easy just to pull it over. Because then you can keep that back tightness and then just focus on pulling over. Yeah, so lats again play a big role in that. A lot of girls tend to rush the reps more on a guy. They, they get the weight and it's like, oh, kind of straight down on the line. They're, they're shocked by it. <laughs> so that point there where you lift it, you realise how heavy that is and you get ready to come Sometimes, I was going to mention about the elbow lift. Um, we can go over that, yeah. You mention it now. Go for it. Oh, so have a look at his elbows. So that elbows in is all he's doing is just rotating. So again, like everyone hold the, hold the arm straight. Imagine trying to turn your elbows down, kind of what you're kind of doing to the bar. You're going to try and bend the bar, aren't you? Although you're not bending it, all you're doing is creating that torque and creating that tension. So when you do create that, your elbows will naturally come in more, won't they? Yeah? So that's the key one, there and then. Obviously your hands aren't going to be like that, you're not, you're not, you're not going to bend the bar. <laughs> okay, so. When the bar's coming down to your chest, don't think the bar's coming to you. I want you to try and think, take your chest to the bar. Okay, so that's just another way of looking at it. So don't be waiting and waiting and waiting. Think of, I'm pushing up, I'm pushing up, I'm pushing up. So like, if you're pushing your chest up, what's that gonna reinforce? Tension, where? Well that's belly, where else? Upper back. Everyone just do that, like, everyone just do that motion. What'd you feel? In your back. So yeah, so all you're doing is just reinforcing your upper back tightness, aren't you? Because you're there, you're pushing up, 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 and then you'll go, and obviously then it'll go down. A key one to this is how mobile you are in your upper back. If you're like this all the time, you know, you're not gonna get that T-spine motion. So T-spine should move what maybe 30, 40 degrees extension. If you haven't got that, then obviously you're gonna be quite flat on the bench. But if you can bend, which girls usually are awesome at bending, I'll have to put that video up. There's a video of some 12, 13 year old Russian powerlifter, and literally, she was like this. Whoosh, whoosh. Like her back was like that. Have you seen it, Jake? And she probably benched about two inches. But she was like a world record holder, because her spine was like this. 
<laughs> I'll, I'll find it. I'll, to, I'll put it out there. So on that one, think of taking your chest to the bar. Okay? Um, we kind of went over on the foot position. Let's look at yours again, Carl. So you'll see like that, you'll see some guys go wide, you'll see some guys coming real close. I'll show you mine in a minute, mine's a bit different. We'll have a look at Jake's, I'm sure Jake's will be different as well. So doing that one, there's no right or wrong. Feel where it's comfortable for you. Feel where you get the most power you know, from your legs. And then lastly, push the bar fast. Um, under control on the way down, we take a little pause and then we explode up. Same as the deadlift, you've got to be pushing that as fast as you can. Think of the speed. If you're moving the bar fast, you will move it fast. Great so. cue that Sean used to give me, he used to stand over the top of me and say this over and over again. Imagine the bar strangling someone that you care about the most in the world. And all you want to do is just get it off him. By the time I left this gym, I was in tears and said it that much to me. <laughs> just imagine that and you'll move it fast. I don't know this that kind of day. Explode. That's it. Explode. Even no. on your warm-up reps, why would you want to move the bar fast on your warm-up rep, uh, warm reps? So strength is obviously lift and heavy weights, but with obviously through your muscles, what else helps to, I'm gonna word this, how, what else helps to move that weight fast? Oh, that's probably the wrong question. Basically, I'll just say, so when you move the weight fast, you're, you're like, you're kind of priming your nervous system, you know, you're firing that up. So every warm up rep, uh, weight, whatever it's, even if it's the five, the 10, the 60, make sure you're shifting it faster. When you come to your heavier weight, your body's ready to move it. Okay, Jake, let's just have a look at your setup. Is it any different? Did I bring my wide grip or is that the same? Yeah, do your wide grip. New ball game. Jake's trying to make things easier, so he's going for a wider grip. So that's so a wider grip shortens the range, doesn't it? <laughs> so have a look at his feet. Not too much of an arch. That's it. I'll show you mine. Let's see if I can. <laughs> so I've started using this more of a principle. I've started really trying to get the weight on the upper traps. Then I'll put my feet down. I like, I like these benches because like I squeeze into the bench, you know, with my heels. So you can try that. So squeeze in, but make sure that weight is all on the traps. And I'll really try and focus on digging us all the way in. Hold for a split second. I'll look at the elbows. So see how I'm twisting them in. Whose was the best? <laughs> I was going to say that then. <laughs> um, who, can we have a, a volunteer? Who thinks, they've, who thinks they need a bit of work on the bench? I just want to, I just want to put you under the spotlight. Rach, come on. Rach. Let's have a look. Let's have a look and let's all have, see what we can pick up on. Okay. Is that a bit high, that bar? Sure. So with all the weight on your traps. Nice, okay, here you go. So abs, tight. <laughs> tight here, please. So think bracing. Tighter. So breathe into your belly a bit more. Breathe it and then hold, that's it, good. The leg drive. See that she's using my tip there. Feet against it. You want to try that one? It works. <laughs> Squeeze the bar tight. So what are you doing with the elbows? There we go. So that's not too bad, that is it? Go again. Just kind of one thing. You know, when you're looking from the side, you want to make sure that your forearms stay vertical as well. So you can see when someone lifts. Like if Rachel was to go quite high on the chest, you'll see where that. See how the angle will change to a bit more like that. So that's why we always say aim for your sternum. So when the bar comes down, your power is under your elbow, straight up. Okay, actually that was that was good, Rach. Okay, someone else please. Dan. Go on, Dan. Dan, get that. That's the foot forty on. There you have me there. 
So obviously when you're training with, you know, with your partners and stuff, try and look out for the things as well. So, um, so I want you just to have a little feel and prod and see what you can find. How was the setup there? So, you, so where should your eyes be? Under the bar. Dan, are your eyes under the bar? No, don't move the bar back. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. So as he shuffles forward, he's going to get into a better position. Come on, Dan. Come on. That's it. So create that bit more tension. Don't rush it on the way down. Elbows. Push. So do the elbows first. So elbows, belly, heels, abs, glutes. Explode. So Dan's quite flat, isn't he? He hasn't got much of an arch at all. So that's something he can work on. So to get Dan a bit more of an arch, are you comfy there, Dan? Not especially, no. Okay. So what I'd say here to Dan is I'd say shuffle this way. Keep going. Keep going. So bring your feet back. Bring your feet back. Feet back. Keep shuffling. Okay, now his feet are in place. Now I'm going to say hold the bar. Now take your eyes under the bar. We're keeping your feet where they are. So on your eyes under the bar. So see now he's really forcing that arch into position. Keep going. Good. There we, now we're getting it. So abs, tight, tight. Glutes, drive your heels down. Obviously when you press up, is that a better position? A more powerful position? Okay, pull the bar slightly this way. Breathe. Elbows, that's it. Nice. Again. Go one more. Good. Yeah, better, isn't it? Better. A hard thing to do is trying to keep that chest up throughout the reps, because what you'll do is you'll go down and you'll kind of just flatten out. So it's hard trying to keep that extension. So, like a number one rule I would say is that upper back tightness is the hardest thing to practice. But if you can get that right, that's you going to stay tight all the time. Yeah? Get, get that bent out. Yeah, it is. It's just like, you know, trying to squash you in. Yeah? So there, you, you know, you might spend 10, 15 seconds getting set up and then... Okay. Yeah? Um, any questions on that? And then we'll, we'll dive in and have a look. No? All good? Okay. Explode. A little bit lower. So as soon as you unwrapped it then, all your tension disappeared. Abs. Abs. And what are you doing with your elbows? That's it. Side to side. Right the way over. You can bend the knees, to, you know, just to give you the balance. Push that chest up. So see how they're starting to round a little bit. So like, if you ever see that, it makes me think that she's not pulling her shoulder blades tight enough. So upper back tightness is obviously shoulder blades together which when you've got the bar on your back, it's easy to do because you're in that position, aren't you? So all I'd say to Jake is to think of is trying to bend the bar over his back. So he's just going to pull the bar down like this. So straight away, you're going to be tight there. You might see some guys with the elbows back like that. So all I'd say is just try and bend it and pull the elbows under the bar. So then it's there. Um, who knows much on like bar placement, where to put the bar? You know, does anyone struggle with that? Anyone heard of high bar, low bar? Okay, so as like as a rule of thumb, you, you look at Olympic lifters like uh, you know the snatch, the clean and press. They always take more of a high bar, so the bar's up high, because they usually go real deep into a squat. Power lifters, on the other hand, will probably go as low as possible, mainly because they can't physically get high and they need to get it low to get their arms around because they're so big. But usually because they sit more back rather than down. Olympic lifters will be more quad dominant, powerlifters will be more ass and hamstring dominant. Just, you know, just because of the nature of what they need to hit in their sport. So, find where's best for you. Again, there's no right, right answer. It's just, it's just kind of feeling what's good, you know. You, you know, you just want to make sure that you're tight and it's strong and you, you, can, you can kind of hold that tension there. Right, so that's your upper back tightness. Um, first thing when you squat, what do you do? So he's got the bar on his back, he's ready, he's braced. What's the first thing you do? Yeah, 
actually, yeah. No, yeah, we'll breathe, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, let's talk about feet position. What do you do with your feet? Yeah, so what does screwing them into the floor do? Yeah, so screwing your feet into the floor, Jake, as a little example. You know, so you want to create torque in your hips. So what I'd say is start off, start, start with your feet straight. And then imagine corkscrewing them into the ground. So you screw them into the ground, so then you, your toes will finish out slightly. So screw them in. There you go. So straight away, after doing that, he should feel a bit of tension here. His knees are then going to be more in line with his toes. So when he goes down, he's going to squat and his knees are going to come out. Um, whereas if you just obviously sit up and then just squat down, you, you've got no tension in your hips. But by adding that little bit of torque, you're going to kind of generate so much more power. Um, so obviously, bar on the back, brace, torque. Then what comes next? What's the first thing you do before you, well, when you squat? Two. Chest up, yeah, yeah, yeah. So all the positions ready. You're about to go down, what do you do? What do you say? Breathe, yeah, breathe. After that? Yeah, so what do you do? Yeah, so you push your bum back. So yeah, your hips always break first before your knees. So you always want to think bum back, then down. So it's like kind of sitting into the hole. Your bum goes back, down, into the hole and up. Um, if your knees don't go out, you'll find that you can't sit in the hole. But as soon as you just create that torque, push your knees out then, you'll just kind of sit in so much deeper. And obviously a deeper squat means a lot of things. So, hips back first. Okay, Jake, let's have a little look at that. So he's got the back tightness. He'll create the torque with his, with his feet, sit back, and then down. So I'll be honest, Jake couldn't squat probably about a year and a half ago. <laughs> That's probably why I couldn't squat. But like, Jake's squat, he, like, he used to squat so high, but then he, he had issues, he had a bit of tight, his hips, it was your ankles, wasn't it? And what else did you have issues? Knees and knackered. That's probably why I sound like a shotgun every time I do a rep. So it's just making sure you push your bum back, your knees go out. But, I can say, don't worry too much about the noise. That's not painful, is it, Jake? No. No, so obviously, you know, you're gonna get cracks and clicks and stuff, as long as it's not painful. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, so it's making sure your bum goes back, your knees go out, and you sit down into the hole. Um, with having his, with having his, uh, his, his, his uh, back tight, his chest is naturally going to be up, isn't it? Because if you're there, if you're squeezing there, your chest is going to be up. Um, and then I would say, obviously, you know, your last one is speed of execution again. So control on the way down, hit depth, explode up, mm -hmm. um, move the weight fast. What would you add to that, Jake? Just on the uh, chest being up, sometimes people fail a rep because when they're coming out of the hole, the chest isn't up, so they're just leaning forward straight away. And that's why they fall out of the hole and then they lose all the tension in the floor. So even though it sounds such a simple thing to do, even when you've got a, you know, a model with heavy weight, just make sure you're really forcing your chest up on the way up. Yeah? I look up and I'm focused on that. Yeah. Because your head's on your chest up. Yeah. Yeah. Then you're going to drive up. Hand placement, so you know when you set up on the bar, make sure that you go even. So your hands are even there. Then if you're even there, your head should go under here. So my setup, for example, I mean, there's not, there's probably not a lot of difference. Really getting that back tightness. Screw the feet in. Look up. Breathe. Ooh, I fell over. A bit tender. I did as well. <laughs> so back and forth. So everyone's going to squat slightly different. Some might squat with a bit wider, like a bit wider feet, a bit narrower feet. Um, some may go a bit more of a duck position. There's no right or wrong with this, all right? You know, we all want to squat bench and other, but if we can't do them, if it's going to put you more at risk, then just say to yourself, why don't I just not do this for a period of time while I work on the issues and, and then I'll come back to it. Like Tom, for example, probably shouldn't be squatting. Um, actually, just do a little demo of what you did. Have a look at his squat. I mean, it's not bad, bad. I've seen a lot worse. But Tom's, Tom's got back issues, he's got stiff hips, he's, his upper back's stiff. I bet he nails us now. <laughs> so, we, so obviously, 
he's, he isn't going low enough. So then you say to that, if he was to go in our eight week block, he's going to load that position, isn't he? So he's going to load a position that he can do, which is just this and this. Is that helping his other issues? Not at all. So it's like, well, why do it? So is he better off doing the famous Bulgarian? So, so it, obviously he's going to get a lot lower. He's going to get more of a stretch. So just always keep that in mind. If you can't do a lift, if we say don't do it for a period of time, it's not like we're picking on you. It's more like we're doing it for your own safety as well. Okay, so obviously don't squat as one thing. Name of the points. Grace. Who? Feet, yeah. Coffee. Yeah, tight upper back. Yeah, Holly. <laughs> and then fast up, yeah. Um, one thing, a couple of things, I mean, that we didn't um, go on was your hand position. So obviously when your hands, you know, you, you know when you've got your grip, if that doesn't feel comfy, just go hand over the top. And make sure that your wrist is straight as well. Make sure you're not holding the bar with your wrist like that there. You want to be tight in it. Okay? So the three lifts, they've, they've all got similarities, haven't they? They've all got a tight upper back, they've all got bracing, they've all got lats, uh, they've all got some sort of torquing. So they're all pretty much the same lift, just a different position. You know, when you think about it, a bench, it's like a, a deadlift, isn't it? Because you're in that position. Um, other things we probably didn't talk about was your grip. You know, when you're doing your deadlift, like the guys ask the question, when do you change your grip to an under over? Try and stay with this for as long as possible. Only when you need it, go to an under over. Because obviously it is a grip exercise. And uh, what other things do you reckon we didn't cover? See if there's got any questions. Yeah, anything we didn't cover, do you think? body's going to perform better in like a neutral position. If you put it out of position, you're not going to have as much power. So that goes for like that or like that. You know when you deadlift, keep it neutral. Don't hyperextend unless you find it hard to get a flat back without hyperextending. Um, any other questions then to close out? Um, have you all benefited? Have you? So Jake's put together a PDF, which once we get the pictures from Alex, we'll put it in and then you guys can get access to it. Uh, you got your five points, so it's just put it into practice now. So practice makes perfect, as I say, perfect practice. But is that is that true? Is it not? I don't know. Is it practice makes perfect? Perfect practice. Perfect practice makes practice perfect. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So uh, thanks so much for Jake for sorting this out and putting it on for us, writing all the script. Any questions you have, guys, um, ask us all the way. But um, thanks so much for turning up on a Sunday morning. Thank you, Alex. <laughs>